It's that time again, Thanksgiving football, traditionally the most important game of the year for the high school boys. Due to the playoff system we have nowadays, Thanksgiving football is kind of taking a back seat. But if you've ever played in one of these games, you'll remember it for the rest of your life. So traditionally, and as I see it, this is the most important game of the year. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wilmington Community Television's Thanksgiving Day broadcast of the 84th annual Thanksgiving Day Football Classic. The Tewksbury Redmen, Wilmington Wildcats on the gridiron today. We want to thank you for joining us at WCTV, WCTV.org. We hope you enjoy today's game. The Redmen are coming in, outstanding season, got knocked out of the playoffs last week, but they come in at a the record of nine wins and two losses after a heartbreaking loss to... North Attleboro in the sectional Eastern Mass playoff game last week. Wilmington comes into the game with their best record in years, eight wins and two losses. Captains go out to midfield for the Wildcats, number 44, Jason Valley, number four, Tyler Roberts, and number five, Graham Smith. On the Tewksbury sideline, co-captains Brandon Wynn, Blake Hiltz, George Matovu is out there. Joe Rosberg. Looking forward to a very competitive game today. And from the looks of it down in midfield, a little bit of media coverage from one of the Boston television outlets as well. Okay, we've had the coin flip at midfield. Tewksbury's won the toss. They have elected to defer until the second half, so they'll be kicking off for Wilmington as we start today's ball game. We'll stand by for a moment. The Tewksbury High Marching Band will be playing the national anthem on the far side of the field. Well, we're finally ready for football action here at Doucette Field in Tewksbury. Chris Neville calling the play-by-play -play of today's game. I have Jim Boyle alongside. Call a little bit of the analysis of today's game. On camera today, Tom Pizarra, Jim Buckley, and George Breslin is down on the sideline camera. So we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us for the game today. So we're, we're almost ready for the kickoff. Wilmington will be receiving going from right to left. Actually, it's a nice day today too. We got relatively lucky with the weather, not too windy, not too cold. Good day for these seniors to uh, close out a pretty good career that they've had, a good final season. Bright sunshine, temperatures about 35 degrees right now. Field maybe a little bit damp from yesterday's rain, but uh, let's hope for a good game today on both sides. Tyler Keogh kicks the ball off at Tewksbury. It's a short kick, it's gonna fall short. Picked up by John Kenny, who takes it at the 30, 25 yard line, taken down about the 29 yard line of Wilmington. Yard markers are kind of hard to see from up here in the booth. So Wilmington takes over, first possession of the game. And it looks like it's going to be at the 30, yeah, let's see, 29 yard line of Wilmington. So Graham Smith brings the Wildcats out. A couple of injuries on the offensive line. We'll see how the guys hold up on the front. One of them being Kyle Saeed, only in his second game as a starter. Connor Benoit goes in motion. Play pass out to the left side is complete. Stop for little or no gain, maybe a loss of a yard.
Justin Frazier well, checks in, Benoit checks out. Looks like Wilmington's gonna look to spread the field a little bit more. Tewksbury, he's got a lot of strength up front, in a, a lot of big size guys, so the more we can get to the edge, we'll be better. Let's see if uh, they continue to do that with Graham and, and these backs, smaller backs. Inside handoff, cuts off tackle. John Kenny stop and no gain. Once again at the 29 yard line, no running room there. Good stop by the interior defensive line. Tyler Wilson in on the play for Tewksbury. Along with Joe Rosberg, their co-captain. So third and long, something we're gonna try to avoid. The Wildcats will try to avoid all day is not to get into third and, and a long situation, but see what they can do here. Smith back to pass. He's got four wide receivers out, pressure's on. He escapes it, he rolls out to the right, lets the ball go downfield, man is open, and it's Smith's incomplete. Missing. Intended for Tommy Robage on the far sideline at the 40 yard line. Smith has showed a lot of elusiveness this year. He was able to escape from the pass rush there. Had a man open, but it was just a little bit overthrown. It was a good idea as well. It looked like our, our receiver, Robarsh, got separation from his um, defender as well. So something to look forward to as we, as we play on here. Again. Fourth, fourth and 10 for the Wildcats. Smith off the punt, gets the ball away. It's an end over end kick and it's down right where it lands at the 42 yard line. Taken by Kyle Zervis, junior uh, receiver. So Tewksbury takes the ball over at the 42. Junior quarterback Jay Connolly comes out to lead the Redmen. Had a very good season thus far this year. High formation in the backfield. Brandon Wynn is number nine, co-captain. He gets the ball in the handoff. He stopped immediately for no gain. Kyle Kenyon in the first on the tackle. It's like Paxton Cook in there, number 77. Wynn did peck up a yard out to the 42-yard line, second and nine. And Kenyon and Dean Nally, the two defense ends, are going to be very important today as well to try to keep uh, Tewksbury contained. Again, good first down play for the Wildcats. Hiltz has shown the ability to go either up the middle or around the end, so. Pitch back to Hiltz again. There you go. Good I'm sorry, win. Taken down at the 40, 45 yard line. A lot of these guys in the Tewksbury uh, skill positions were also on the team last year where they worked very hard to uh, earn a 21-7 victory against the Wildcats last Thanksgiving Day. Nolan Cavanaugh comes up split wide to the right. Connolly in the shotgun. He's back to pass. Pressure's on by Kenyon. He misses him. More receivers in and it's gonna be incomplete. Right, intercepted by Wilmington. Is that Pat Carroll? Yeah, Pat Carroll with the interception. Nice diving interception there. Sorry. Connolly was under a lot of pressure. He got the ball away. Kenyon almost had him in the backfield. And then great defense. A uh, couple of the Wilmington defenders, Tyler Roberts and Pat Carroll, were in on the interception. Number right at the Tewksbury 49 yard line, where the Wildcats take over for their second series of downs. Smith inside handoff, no gain to John Kenny. He actually loses a yard, stopped at midfield. So Kenny. early on, running room looks like it's gonna be difficult, uh, especially up the middle, although if we can get Kenny through the hole to break it, his speed has been advantageous all year. So let's see how well we can adjust to this. Robage and Ducharme out wide to the left. Roberts and Frazier out wide to the right. Once again, Smith is back to pass. Rushes on, pass over the middle is incomplete, intended for Michael Ducharme at about the 46 yard line. Gonna bring up third and 11 for the Wildcats. 
And once again, in a long situation, a third long situation for Wilmington, not advantageous to the way the offense runs. Both of the Wildcats' last games against Marblehead and North Reading, the offense went scoreless in the first half, but it's very important for Wilmington to jump out to a lead today. Tuxbury plays very well from ahead in the game. Roberts is split out wide to the right, two receivers in the slot. Smith rolls to the right, great block in the backfield by Kenny, passes complete to Tyler Roberts, is gonna be shy of a first down at about the 42 yard line. Picked up about nine yards on the play. Make it about eight yards, gonna be fourth and three for the Wildcats. And we'll see what Coach Turner decides to do here. Gonna He's gonna punt. Looks like he wants to pay, pay, play field position today. Try to force Tuxbury to make mistakes. Right now, nobody back but Tuxbury. Okay, Mason Lorick now goes back into the receiving position. Smith gets the ball away. It's a good kick. Taken downfield. Good coverage by the Wildcats, and Lorick is taken down at the 15 yard line. Brendan Ross in on the tackle. Again, good punt coverage, second time in a row. Forcing Tuxbury to start deep in their zone. Single set back in the backfield again for Connolly. Hand off up the middle, stopped immediately for a loss of a yard. Hand off to Brandon Wynn. Make that George Matobo on the carry. Wholesale change up in the uh, skill positions for Tuxbury. Win alone in the backfield now with Connolly, who's in a shotgun formation. Two wide receivers right, one left. Man in motion. Back to pass is Connolly. Being chased by Kenyon, it's complete. To Hilt, stopped at the 19 yard line. Good pursuit, John Kenny, big tackle, open field. Forcing Mason Lorick on the reception. We'll get these numbers right eventually. <laughs> Not easy to see up here. So it's gonna be third and about six for the Redmen at the 19 yard line. Lorick out wide to the left. Everybody else is in tight. Connolly in the shotgun. Hiltz goes in motion. Back to passes. Connolly lets it go. It's complete on the sideline. Good for first down. He escapes down the sideline. Finally taken down almost to midfield. The 49 yard line. Good pass and catch by Tuxbury. A little bit of a missed tackle there by Wilmington. Adds a couple extra yards. Again, the field position has now switched on the one play. Full backfield for the Redmen right now. Hand off, second man through. Oh. Brandon Wynn, he picks up another 10 yards. One thing that's consistent with Brian Aylward, he keeps you on your toes on the defense. Tuxbury's always good for at least four or five unique plays that you have to be ready for. Braden Hiltz tight on the left side. I formation in the backfield. Connolly calls signals again. Triple I. Again, Hiltz goes through the middle. He stopped for about three or four yards. Finally, gang tackle 
on the defensive side. Justin Frazier in on the tackle, along with Pat Carroll. Brings up second and six for the Redmen. Let's see if Tuxbury continues to, to uh, try to use their power and their big backs and their offensive line up the middle, try to continue to establish a running game. It looks like he's going to switch up again here. Okay, five wide receivers out for Tuxbury. Back to pass. It's a quick screen, a quick flat out pass. Good Stop, play. but no gain. Completed over to Nolan Cavanaugh. A lot of officials on the Wilmington sideline asking for a holding call, but uh, that went for not. No gain, but took spree third and seven now. Again, they tried to get fancy, and it cost them. So let's see what they... Uh, Wilmington looked like they're ready for that fancy type of play. Tyler Roberts came out and covered that very well. That's where they thought the hold was. Once again, Kavanaugh out to the right, back to pass Connolly, looks downfield, pressure's on, and he lets the ball go out of bounds. He throws it away. Good pressure by Kyle Kenyon and Tyler Roberts in the Tuxbury backfield. So it brings up fourth down for Tuxbury at the 37-yard line. They'll probably go for it on fourth down here. So we'll get another opportunity for Wilmington's defense to change the field position again here if they can make the stop on fourth down. Shane Elwood and Kyle Zervis going most to the right. That's our Connolly ball. Connolly slips, it's a lateral, and the it ball is loose. Wilmington picks it up on the sideline, down the sideline to the, this guy is dead. On the dead. It's coming back. Bailey Smith picked up the loose ball on the muffed pitch back to the running back. Runs it back to the 35 yard line of Tuxbury. Well, Wilmington will take over with first down. And for the second time in the game, the defense comes up big once again, forcing a turnover. It's two turnovers. They've, Tuxbury's given the ball away twice. So let's see if the offense and Graham can capitalize. Graham Smith can capitalize here. I don't know if that was the case of the field being a little bit slippery, but Connolly lost control of his feet right after he got the snap. Smith fakes the hand off to Kenny, runs to the left, finds a little bit open running room across the 30 and down inside the 30 of the 28 yard line. Good pickup of about seven yards, faked the hand off to Kenny, kept the ball and went off left tackle. Second and about four for the Wildcats. Again, let's see if they can capitalize on the turnover. Very important here. Put points on the board. Get Tuxbury to play from behind. We got a timeout called on the field. Wilmington Wilson. takes the timeout. <laughs> Coach did not look, did not look, look like the look of uh, Tuxbury's defense there for his play call, most likely. Um, and again, on that last play, the zone read by Graham Smith, where he. They holds the hand off from uh, the running back and goes left. He, he read it properly and hit the hole. So uh, good offensive play. It's been a quick first quarter. We're down to about two minutes and 10 seconds left to go here in the quarter. Wildcats send three receivers out wide to the left. Ducharme, Robarge, and Roberts all split on the left. Looks like a power left formation. Back to pass. Man oh, is open down field. Oh. And I think it might have been the eyes of Justin Frazier. He was open downfield. I don't think he saw the ball down about the five or six yard line. It looked like he had the, the sun is directly behind him there. So when he looked up, it looked like he did not, he lost the ball in the sun. It's a uh, bright, sunny day, early morning day in the field. He was looking east and there's where the sun is. So right call, pass looked like it was there. He just lost it in the sun. So the Wildcats are faced with a third and about four. Roberts is lined up in the backfield now with Kenny. Hand off to Kenny to the left, tries to get around the corner. He, he might have picked up a yard, stopped short of the first down. He 
Yeah, she might have lost a yard on the play. Fourth down and four, looks like. Yep. It's at the 30-yard line. And they will uh, go for it here. There'll be no punt. There'll be no field goal. Too long a field goal attempt. See if, see if Graham Smith can make a play here to keep the drive alive. Three wide receivers right. Robarge, Frazier, Roberts. Passes oh. open but dropped. Intended for Robarge, had a little bit of running room, would have been close to a first down, but Tuxbury holds on first on fourth down and they'll take over at their own 30 yard line. So defensively it's been a success so far, turning the ball over. Offensively we missed a few passes that looked like they've been open. Uh, so if uh, Wilmington wants to stay in the, and win this football game, they're gonna have to complete the plays like that. And those are plays that they've been making all year. So it's, uh, it's a tough early morning start offensively. The Wildcats have been a big play team all year long. A lot of touchdowns have gone for 40, 50 yards. So Tuxbury's got the ball now. Connolly, two men in the backfield. Very tight formation. Hand off up the middle, a big hole. Number 44 is Shane DeRigos. Full back. And, and when your tackles are made by the quarterback and the safety, you know that the uh it was a, se a successful play by Tuxbury as uh, Kenny and Marino made the tackle that play your quarterback and your safety. So if they're getting into the secondary, we're, we're going to run into a little problem with that offensive set by Tuxbury. So ball is out to the 42-yard line. Once again, Dorigo in the backfield with Connolly. And Kavanaugh, he hands off to Kavanaugh, goes left to right, finds some open running room. Some good running room out close to another first down across midfield. Little misdirection play there and uh, found a nice seam along the uh, right defensive side for Wilmington. So it brings the ball out just inside the 50 yard line to the 49 of the Wildcats. Took breeze on a drive here. Two good plays to start off this drive. We're down to 30 seconds now in the first half, uh, first quarter. Mason Laura comes out split wide to the right. Hiltz goes in motion, hand off to Wynn. He stopped for a short gain, maybe about three, close to 45 yards. And then almost likely end the, nope, timeout. Who stopped the clock? Looks like the end of the first quarter. Yeah. So at the end of the first quarter, no score. Tuxbury Redmen, Wilmington Wildcats. No action on the board yet. We'll be right back after this brief station break. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Okay, we're ready to start the second quarter here. Connolly, hands off up the middle, another big hole. First down, picked up by Brandon Wynn. Gets inside the 40-yard line, down to about the 38. So on this drive, it looks like uh, Tuxbury's running to the left side of their offense. And, and what I've noticed is Tyler Roberts is lined up on the right side. I don't know if they're running away from Tyler. Tyler was the co-MVP of the uh, Middlesex League. So Tuxbury knows who he is and where he is. And they're, if they're purposely trying to avoid him, they're doing a good job getting that ball to the left side. So let's see what happens here. Now they move Tyler inside and Kenyon out. So let's see what happens. As, Okay, timeout called by Wilmington. Once again, maybe Coach Turner didn't like what he saw on the sideline. So again, Tuxbury running away from our best defensive player. Uh, makes sense, and again, in this drive, Tuxbury's going back to their power football where they're just loaded up and running it off tackle, most likely the left. And when he has gotten fancy, he's run into trouble. So let's see if he can, mm -hmm. how, how, how Coach Howard decides to play here. Wilmington's defense has um, made the stops when needed, so let's see if we can do it again here. 
Switch up a couple of the defensive linemen. Kyle Kenyon goes in at left defensive end and Dylan Bresnahan comes in at right tackle. Connolly calls signals, man in motion. See, handoff, he trips Tyler on the handoff Roberts. and the running back is gonna be stopped in the backfield. Brandon Wynn stopped the, uh, they almost dropped the handoff. Okay, that was Tyler. <laughs> again, Tyler Roberts was on that side. And again, uh, Wilmington was ready to make that play. So let's see again what Tewksbury does here. Let's see if they decide to go right at Tyler again. And, and Kenyon, Kenyon made that play as well, so. That area of the ball field where the ball is currently placed is very muddy. It's about a, a 10 or 12 yard stretch there. And I think Connolly uh, slipped on the mud on the handoff. So Tewksbury's now second and 12. Ball is out at the 40 yard line. Okay, Roberts has now switched to the left side here defensively. Let's see what happens. Fumble. Fumble on the snap. Back to pass, Good and Connolly is taken down for another loss back at the 49 yard line. Very uncharacteristic for uh, the Redmen. They've already lost uh, two turnovers, in addition to uh, coming very close on that one as well. Again, I think your, your observation about the field conditions is also correct. They're having a lot of trouble uh, with it being wet. Uh, and there again, the quarterback made the right play by following. He actually didn't make the right play. He didn't try to follow the ball. He tried to make something more than he could. Almost turned into a, another big turnover for the Wildcats. So it's going to be third and uh, almost 25 for Tewksbury here. Back to pass, Connolly lets it go deep downfield. The man is open, it's overthrown. Very Tended good coverage. Mason by Lorick, thrown out of bounds on the sideline. Good coverage back there by John Kenny. Brings up fourth down for the Redmen. Actually, that coverage was Frazier, I think. I'm not 20, I can't tell 26 and 28 apart, but that looked like uh, Justin Frazier. It the could coverage. have been. Again, I've had, I've had the same issue all season, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> these these guys are not uh, six foot four, two hundred and fifty. The numbers are very smaller. True. So Tuxbury's first punt. Okay, right? Wynn is in punt formation for the Redmen, and he's standing at his own forty. And they call timeout. I think the key here may be if they can get somewhere past midfield, they might be able to maneuver a little bit. But Correct. this running area between the uh, thirty and the fifty yard line is really tough. So Kenny's back deep for the Redmen. He's going to be standing back at about his 20-yard line. Hopefully an opportunity for John to get some space as well, U utilize his speed. See if he's we looking can... right into the sun, though. Yeah, that's Snap true. is back. Wynn gets the ball away. He kicks it over Kenny's head. Ball's going to roll down deep inside Wilmington territory. He's going to stop at the four-yard line. Great kick by Brandon Wynn. And again, he kicked it with the sun behind him. Whether John saw that or not, again, a special teams play that uh, doesn't benefit Wilmington after a good stop by their defense. So we'll see if the Wildcat offense can get a little bit untracked here. Some of the camera angles today might be kind of hard to pick up on that corner of the end zone, so we'll, uh, we'll have the Wildcats run to the left on it, plays on this drive anyway. Yeah. I'm sure the coach will be happy to hear my suggestions. Two men in the backfield, Roberts and Kenny up the middle. Kenny finds some running room, gets uh, away from the goal line, across the five, down to about the eight-yard line. Picked up about four yards on the play. A good conservative play call, play call, conservative by the coach. Get away from the uh, shadow of the goal posts and see if we can make a shorter field. Shorter distance for third, second, third down. So that seems to have been our problem early on as we have a lot of third and long. Not sure if it, the fatigue factor is uh, kicked in with Tewksbury a little bit. They just played a game a few days ago, four days ago. Smith fakes the handoff, passes up field. It was intended for Ducharme on the cross pattern. It was incomplete. Good defensive play. Attacked the ball right at the... Uh, Spot of almost completion. Again, Graham's got, the, they're open, the balls are there. That was actually a really good defensive play, so. But we got the, the pass, the pass play seemed to be open. Everything's open. This is now a matter of whether we can make the completions and convert. Again, we're down to a third and six, so. Not as bad as it has been, but let's see what he can do. 
Okay, so big play for Wilmington here to try to get out from the shadow of their goal line. Three wide receivers split wide to the left. Roberts alone on the right side, back to pass. Smith rolls out to the left, lets the ball go downfield. Is intended for Frazier, looked like uh, Mason Lorick might have got a hand on Frazier's back before the ball reached him, but no call. The Wildcats are faced with punt formation inside their own 10 yard line. So that's, that was two plays in a row that their defensive backs broke up the passes from us. Again, it looks like we can, we can be successful with some of those plays. I'm so once again, Smith is back to punt. Kyle Zervis stands, it is inside his own 40 yard line. Smith standing in his end zone. Gets the ball away, it's a beautiful kick. Comes back to midfield and beyond. Probably his best kick of the year and it's down by Connor Benoit on the Tuxbury side of midfield at the 48 yard line. Big punt, big, uh, good, very big special teams play. So there they had the big punt. Graham comes back with another uh, huge punt 40, out of his end zone. 45 yards on the punt and no return. That really Pay Bounce. dividends for the Wildcats on that play. So Tuxbury once again takes the ball out. Just their own side of midfield, Braden Hiltz, tight end on the left side. Man in motion, handoff again to win. Be finds a big hole, cross midfield. Close to a first down. And once again, they're in the middle of the mud. Yep. It is first a first down for Tuxbury. 10 yard gain for Hill for a win. Paxton Cook checks out for the Wildcats. Dylan Bresnahan is back in. Straight on. Once again, Sh Shane DeRigo, the fullback, handoff is to the second man. Once again, win for a big gain. Stop for about an eight yard run off right tackle. Again, they're getting into our secondary with their power run. If they don't get too fancy here, it'll, it, it looks like we're having trouble with that particular play. So, see what Tuxbury does here. Second and two. Connolly hands off again to go. win. This time he stopped. Stopped a little or no gain. Actually lost uh, four inches on the play, according to the down marker. Third and about two. 6.52 to go here in the first half. Still no score. Wilmington and Tuxbury. thank you for joining us on this Thanksgiving Day morning on Wilmington Community Television. Two down territory here for Tuxbury. Connolly hands off again. Once again, he bounces off a tackle. Looks like he's got enough for a first down. Win brings it down to the 30-yard line. Again, just straight power football here for Tuxbury. Line it up in the eye and blast it right at Wilmington. Yeah. They're past the mud now, too, I think. Oh, not really. Laura comes out split wide to the left. Connolly back to pass, stands in the mud, looks downfield. He lets it go. He's hit. Ball is up in the end zone, and it's Touchdown. caught. Touchdown, Mason Lorick. John Kenny was back there in coverage. He had the angle in the play, but the ball just got over his fingertips. And Mason Lorick takes in a 30-yard touchdown pass. Tuxbury jumps out to a 6 to nothing lead. Way too much time for the Tuxbury quarterback on that play to get that ball downfield, although Bailey Smith hit him right at the end. So... Tyler Keough comes in to attempt the extra point for the Redmen. Ball is down, and the kick is good. <laughs> Bailey made it over the crossbar. There's a flag on the play on the far sideline, and it was against Wilmington. And that'll probably be marked off on the kickoff. So with six minutes left to go in the first half, Tuxbury jumps out to a seven to nothing lead.
Very good crowd on the Wilmington sideline today. Tewksbury uh, section of the stands over there are not usable. They got a uh, decent sized crowd on the Tewksbury sideline, but it appears that uh, the resurgence of Wilmington football has brought out a lot of people on the Wilmington sideline today. And that is a good thing. Winning brings out everybody. Now, on that, pay, on that previous drive, we, uh, Tewksbury ran the football for, I don't know, every play until that final uh, pass. So, again, they had um, go to the power football, and then he went deep. Well, because defense has uh, the front seven have to play tough. It, it left man-to-man -man coverage for John Kenny deep. Cost us the touchdown. Bad this time, Dorigo steps into the ball, and the ball is picked up by Roberts on the far sideline. He dances along the sideline for about five yards, taken down about the 25-yard line. Tyler Lakeo, the regular kicker from Tewksbury, was lined up, but then Shane Dorigo was the one that actually kicked the ball down the, down the sideline. Once again, something that uh, Coach Brian Elward also always has uh, something for the defense to think about. So we'll see how the Wildcats do on their next drive. Ducharme splits out wide to the left. Frazier in the slot. Robarge comes out split wide to the right. Two men in the backfield with Smith. Frazier's in motion. Handoff is to Kenny. He stopped for no gain. Once again, the Wildcats are getting into the uh, position on the field where the footing is a little bit treacherous. And Tewksbury's front four has done a really good job in bottling up John Kenny uh, tonight, today, this morning. There we are. So they, again, Wilmington might have to go to something a little bit different, try to get him some, get him out in space a little bit to use again utilize his speed. Once again, Joe Rosberg, the uh, senior co-captain on the defensive line, anchors that group. Once again. Roberts and Kenny in the backfield. Option to Kenny, cuts back, and he stopped in the backfield. Good pursuit in the defensive backfield by Joe Rosberg. Uh, good idea by the offensive coaches. It just wasn't executed well. Get try to, again, trying to get John Kenny into space to utilize his speed is what's going to have to help. To, it will help Wilmington to gain yardage. But right now they're bottling up the number one offensive force for the Wildcats today. So the Wildcats are faced with third and almost 12 from their own 23-yard uh, line. Once again, Ducharme and Robarge are out on the left. Roberts and Frazier on the right. Back to pass. Screen pass is set up to Kenny. Finds some open running room. And once again, the field conditions uh, came back to bite the Wildcats this time. The mud terminated that play, that is correct. So he stopped at the 30 yard line, gonna bring up fourth down for the Wildcats and they'll have to punt the ball away again. 3.30 left to go in the first half. That screen pass has worked all year long, especially on field turf. When you get onto mud, it doesn't work so good. And again, not to be not to be a dead horse, but a, they made the concentrated effort that drive to get John Kenny into space to uh, again utilize the speed, not run an off tackle. They, two times they made the two plays, the the option and the screen pass. Smith gets an end zone end kick away, fair catch called called for and caught at the 36 yard line. Kyle Zervis takes the ball in. So Wilmington uh, on the defense. 324. 325 to go in the first half now. Tuxbury takes the ball over. Once again, junior quarterback Jay Conley leads the Redmen out. See if they continue with the, uh, the run and stuff the ball through the middle of the line offense. And this will be a big series for Wilmington's defense as well, being down 7-0, so. Once again, two tight ends lined up on the left. One goes in motion, back to pass is Connolly, lets the ball go, it. and it's knocked away. Peter Marino, a nice defensive play on the Wilmington defensive secondary at the 40-yard line. And another, just, just another 
a fabulous play by the safety P. Marino there to break that up. Because on that last uh, play fake, they scored a touchdown, went deep. There they went short to the right. He read that perfectly and made a good, uh, great defensive play there. Just when you thought they'd do a little more smash mouth yeah. football, they put the ball back up in the air. Hand off to win up the middle. He finds pretty good running room. Finally knocked down, shy of a first down at about the 44 yard line of Tuxbury. I guess the coach feels he's got a lot of leeway with his passing game when he can run the ball like this. So first down pass might make sense because he's picking up eight yards on second down. Big third down play here though. So we'll see what uh, Coach Elwood has cooked up here. Take some of the mud off the ball. Connolly hands off to Wynn, who has enough for the first down. He's a stop just shy of midfield at the 48 yard line. First down for the Redmen. That was George Matovo on the carry. Matobu was out injured a few weeks ago. Just found his way back into the lineup last week. He's lined up as the flanker right now on the left side. Takes the handoff on the reverse play and he finds some running run the right sideline. He's flag taken down. Him. There's a flag on the play in the backfield. That'll Gotta be, be hold. holding against Tuxbury. That we don't have um, access to the replay here, but I, I would imagine that holding is on. The, the, the hold was Kyle Kenyon had penetrated the backfield. It looked like he was ready to make the tackle and must have gotten held or tackled before he could make that play. So Wildcats catch a break here. It's going to be second down, a uh, first down and 20. Back at the uh, Redmond 39 yard line. So it took till two minutes in the first half for the first penalty to be called here in this Thanksgiving Day game, which is uh, unusual for the highly charged atmosphere that you get for these games. So Connolly in shotgun formation, he's got all of his receivers to the left side. He looks downfield. He stumbles. He's oh. caught and he's knocked down. Four Wildcats into the tackle. Kenyon, Roberts, Dean Nally. Brendan Ross, and, right? And Brendan Ross in on the tackle. So this will be second and about um, very long, should we say. It's going to be at least, uh, yeah, at least 30, 20. close to well, 20, 10, 20. 24. 20, 20 some odd yards, we'll call it. 27 maybe. So with a minute to play, I would not expect Tuxby to do much here, but uh, but with Coach Alward, you never know what he's going to do. He's letting the clock run though here. Look, three men in the backfield, full backfield for Tuxbury. Connolly hands off to the third man through. Stop for no gain. He's going to call him. Brandon Wynn. And that's Wilmington calls timeout here. And the Wilmington sideline calls a timeout. It's going to be third and 22, 23 for the Redmen. Only a half a minute left in the uh, half. But Wilmington is looking for an opportunity to get the ball back in decent field position for maybe one or two plays. I think they only have one timeout left to call. which would be next after this next play, and then try to punt block and see what happens. Yes. Anybody parked on Summer Street, they're gonna tow your car. Of course, they won't know about it till three or four or five days from yeah. now. <laughs> well, they'll know about it sooner they'll than it gets on TV. Yeah. Hey, where's my car? Well, they just told you they'd tell. All right, so big play coming back 
Coming up on third down for the Redmen. That's not 22. A third and 26, you think? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, 50, 40, Just about, I would say, yeah. And I would expect nothing fancy from Tewksbury here, but again, you never know. He's going in the shotgun. All right, so Connolly has one man in the backfield with him. Three wide receivers out. One man being targeted down the sideline. It's oh caught geez. for a first down. That was a phenomenal throw and catch yep. there by Tuxbury. Caught by Mason Lorick on the far sideline. Justin Frazier on the coverage. And they put more time back on the clock. I don't know if that's a mistake or not. But Tuxbury is now driving in a good position at the 25 yard line of the Wildcats. They've put time on to over a minute. Of course the official time is kept on the field. So Tuxbury's driving again. Don't Hiltz is the man in motion. Back to pass is Connolly. Throws it short. Caught. And knocked out of bounds by Hiltz. Picked up about six yards. Quick out. Good read by the quarterback there. Get the ball out of bounds. Although I think Tuxbury does have a few timeouts left. And we're running blind here in the booth because we're not exactly sure what the time is in the uh, half as the scoreboard has changed from like 35 seconds to one minute, now it's down to 55 seconds. Big series of downs for the Tewksbury defense as well, uh, for the Wilmington defense, excuse me, here. So Lorick splits out wide to the right. He's been the favorite target so far this afternoon. Brandon Wynn is in the slot on the left, and there's a timeout call by Wilmington. Looks like the uh, sideline wasn't quite sure they had the right coverage. So we'll take another time out here. Why don't we pause for this message from uh, Wilmington Community Television. We'll be right back for the last minute of the action in the first half. Okay, we're back at Doucette's, Doucette Stadium here in Tewksbury. Tewksbury is on a drive. They have the ball second down and five at their Wilmington 20 yard line. Jay Connolly with random win in the backfield, back to pass. Looks downfield, pressure's on, he's under pressure and he's gonna be sacked. Once again, good defense by the defensive front of the Wildcats, knocks him down at the 30 yard line. And there's a timeout again on the sideline called by Tewksbury this time. So they'll face a third down and long. Good play, a good secondary coverage by the Wilmington defense there. Uh, coverage sack by the uh, defensive line. One of the things Tewksbury's done well, not only have they run the football well, they have, they have they've completed two very long passes, which have really hurt Wilmington. So they've uh, mixed up their offense a little bit. One more stop here, they'll cause a fourth down, and I don't know what kind of field goal kicker Tewksbury has, but they're not gonna kick out of the mud here. So my guess is this will be two down play here for Tewksbury. Okay, Wilmington brings in some uh, more defensive backs and linebackers in, three-man rush, back to pass Conley, fakes the pass. Passes downfield, and once again, it's caught down on the sideline, close to the end zone. At the half yard line. Yeah, inside the one yard line, Shane Elwood, another in the uh, the, the line and the train of uh, Tewksbury Redmond named Elwood, takes the ball in at the one yard line. So Tewksbury is just a couple of feet away from pay dirt here, Connolly. Full backfield, handoff in the middle to win. And it looks like he's fighting. It. He doesn't make it. He stopped for no gain. Another timeout on the field called by Tewksbury. So it'll be smash, smash mouth football here for Tewksbury. It looks like the other thing on that previous pass play, they're, they're taking advantage of the smaller Wilmington quarter, cornerbacks as well. As it looks like the both both or actually all three of the passes, the one touchdown and the two deep passes, have been thrown up and over the coverage, over the smaller back. So we'll see if uh, the Wildcats can hold strong and keep the Redmen out of the end zone. Rossberg in the backfield, 
with Blake Hiltz and Brandon Wynn. Another timeout, Wilmington. And it looks like Wilmington has now called the last timeout. Thirty seconds showing on the clock. It's been a, a cleanly played first half, except for the mudded midfield. Tuxbury up currently seven to nothing, but driving and inches away from the Wilmington end zone. And on this drive, Tuxbury has faced a third and twenty-six. And a second and 20, or actually a third and 20, I think, if I recall correctly, and have gotten out a, a deep, deep hole with the, utilizing the arm of the quarterback and, and their passing game. So now let's see if they can use, use their smash mouth type football. They have played well, try to score again. Just a reminder, if you're uh, watching today's game, uh, we're always looking for people to cover some of the winter sports coming up, hockey, basketball, some of the winter track action on Wilmington Community Television. We'll provide you the training and the camera coverage for free. We'd love to have you uh, tape some of the action for both the boys and the girls winter sports teams. Put them on TV uh, so they can get exposed like these kids on the football team are doing this year as well. All right, so we're already second down just outside the goal line. Three men in the backfield for the Redmen. One goes in motion, handoff out on the side nice to win. Play. And he's, he's in. in for touchdown. Co-captain Brandon Wynn. So Tuxbury jumps out to a 13 to nothing lead with seconds to go here in the first half. That was very good initial penetration by defensive line. Uh, Wilming and Kyle Kenyon made the first hit, but couldn't wrap up and the Tuxbury running back spun off the tackle and scored. Once again, Keough in to attempt the extra point. This one is better than the last one, but the other one was good, and this one's good as well. So, waiting for the ensuing kickoff. Tuxbury has jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead over the Wildcats, Thanksgiving Day 2017. Yeah, for, for, for a half that went really quick, the last two minutes of the half have been very slow. Okay, I uh, suspect uh, as we get back to action here, Tuxbury will probably kick the ball deep, try to pin Wilmington back as far as they can. Tyler Keough tees the ball up at the 40 yard line. Wilmington defects have finally up a little bit. Frazier and Kenny are both standing at their own 20 yard line. Even watching some of the previous action from Tuxbury this year, the uh, kickoffs didn't go that far. Actually, once again, Dorigo kicks into the ball, taken by John Kenny in the right sideline, comes out across the 35, almost to the, pick at the, uh, you know, just shy of the 40 yard line. But they're in the middle of the mud with only seconds to go here in the first half, and I don't expect they're going to try to do too much here with the field position that they have. Try to hold on the ball. And... Uh... Yes. So not only does Tuxbury score late, they also get the ball to start the second half. So let's see if, he get, if uh, that makes Coach Turner a little more aggressive here with a few seconds left. Get rid of it, Graham. Sacked in the backfield. Smith was back to pass, uh, had nobody open. He went down at the 25-yard line. So I think Wilmington will and just let the it. seconds tick off here. We've come to the end of the first half. Tuxbury leads the Wildcats 14 to nothing. We'll be back for the second half action right after these messages.
Welcome back to the third quarter action here at Doucette Stadium in Tewksbury, Thanksgiving Day 2017. The Redmen are up 14 to nothing at halftime. Thank you again for joining us on Wilmington Community Television and WCTV.org. Jim, it's uh, the Wildcats hung tough for the better part of a quarter, quarter and a quarter, but then kind of Tewksbury started pushing them around in the second quarter. Yeah, I agree with that. The, the, uh, the three big pass plays in the second quarter uh, for Tewksbury didn't help. I, I don't think we got our offense generated well. I, I, if I recall correctly, we had no first downs That's in correct. the first half. We couldn't take uh, advantage of the two early turnovers by Tewksbury and uh, sort of bog down a little bit offensively. It's time in the second half maybe we can go back out and uh, generate a little bit of offense and score some points. Thank you to uh, Steve from The Advocate who uh, provided some first half statistics. Uh, Jay Connolly for Tewksbury was 7 of 11 for 140 yards in the first half, including three big pass completions. Wilmington quarterback Graham Smith was only 3 for 9 and for only a total of 14 yards. Again, as you mentioned, only uh, no first downs for the Wildcats in the first half. They're kicking off here as we start the second half, and Tewksbury will have the ball early on. So we'll see if the Wildcat defense can hold off and put the Wildcats in good field position. And it looks like Tewksbury has scouted Wilmington a little bit here because of the uh, onside kick uh, uh, success they had at the Marmalade game. They got a lot of their hands guys up front and short. Adam Bishop steps into the ball. It's a squib kick. It is taken, recovered by number 14, Derek Grafeo. So uh, Coach Alward thinking the same way that I was, so be aware of that. We'll be trying to get the turnover on the onside kick. Worked very well against Marblehead yes, uh, three weeks ago and a couple of times last week uh, against North Reading. So Tewksbury will have the ball at their own 47-yard line to start the second, uh, second half. I formation behind Connolly. He's back, hands off to win, who stopped for a short gain, picks up about a yard. Taken now by Tyler Roberts, Kyle Kenyon. Looked like Pat Carroll came up on the tackle in that play as well, second and nine. Good first down play by a defensive line uh, to stuff that run. So Mason Lorick again split out wide to the left, and we already have a Tuxbury. whistle in the play. Tewksbury calls timeout early on in the third quarter. Looks like the uh, defensive line is confusing the quarterback. I'm not sure. Uh, it look, a couple of them are standing up. They're not even getting down at a, at a three, three or four point stance. Let's see what they do now. Okay, now the uh, entire the defensive line reverses their positioning. Tuxbury has yeah. two tight ends left. So they have three guys standing and two guys with one hand on the ground. So it'll be interesting to see what, how we're trying to stop Passes that. Passes out to the left. It's going to be, if it's complete, no call on the field yet. If it's complete, it's for a loss. It is complete. But that's going to be a two-yard loss on the pass play. So it's going to bring up third and about uh, 10 for the Redmen. Let's see if we get the stop here with our defense. Turn the ball over early on downs. Nolan Cavanaugh, product of uh, two Wilmington parents out wide right on the right sideline. Connolly back to pass. He lets the ball go. It's complete. Yeah. Flag on the play and behind the play. The flag in the backfield. It's going to be a Wilmington. It's going to be a personal foul roughing the passer against the Wildcats. Play was good, I believe, for a first down, which is going to add on another 10 yards at least. It's going to be 15 yards in addition to the gain, so it's going to bring the ball down to just outside the 25-yard line. So just when the uh, Wildcats had some momentum on defense, Tuxbury uh, not only completes a pass play, but the Wildcats get called for their first serious penalty of the game. 
Three men in the backfield with Connolly at the 27 yard line. Hand off to the first man through who bounces off a couple attackers, gain, gains several yards. Blake Hiltz on the carry. He picks up about six or seven yards down to the 20 yard line. A good quick hit read by the uh, Tewksbury quarterback there to pick up that yardage. Dorigo and Wynn behind Connolly. Man is motion. Handoff is to Wynn, who fights up the middle again. Looks like he's got enough for a first down again. They sure. Going to be close. Just inches shy of a first down. And actually, the official just called first down. So... Uh, Can't make out the exact down marker from where I am right now. Looks like it's down at about the 18 yard line. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Once again, three men in the backfield. Dorigo, the first man through, handoff to Wynn, who bounces off the first tackle. He keeps on bouncing off the second tackle, and he's taken down. Bounce off about four tackles there. Good play by uh, Pete Marino coming up from his safety position to make the uh, final stop. No, not Pete Marino, that was uh, 43. Was it Marino? Or Bailey Smith, I'm not sure. Yeah. Was either Pete Marino or Bailey Smith making the final play? Yeah, Marino at 42, I think, made okay. the stop on that. So it was a gain of two yards. Second and eight for the Redmen as they continue to drive their first drive of the second half. Once again, Dorigo at the fullback. Went at halfback. Braden Hiltz out wide on the right, comes in motion, handoff up the middle to win. And he's tough to bring down. Right up the gut. Picks up about five or six yards. Going to be third and two for the Redmen. So an interesting play call here for Tewksbury. Could be two down territory with a 14 nothing lead. Wouldn't be surprised to see play action pass. See if they get somebody open to corner of the end zone. Or they can continue to do what they're doing and, and just smash it up through the Wilmington's, middle of Wilmington's defense. Wilmington's got their big bodies in the defensive line. Dylan Bresnahan, Kyle Kenyon, Brendan Ross, and Paxton Cook. Roberts moves up on the line. Connolly in a shotgun position. Four wide receivers out on the left. Man in motion. He sprints to the left. He's got some open running room as he cuts the corner toward the end zone, and he's in. Flag There's a flag on the play in the backfield. So there's going to be a flag, I believe, against Tewksbury. I'm looking at the official on the sideline, so that's probably going to come back. It's going to be holding against Tewksbury. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the Wildcats catch a break there. You know, that's one of those you're watching uh, replay, and you get uh, four wide receivers moving to the left, one of them coming back in the opposite direction, and... A lot of blocking out in front of the quarterback, Jay Connolly. But we'll be back again next year for the Redmen. So it knocks the uh, Redmen back. It's going to be third and 14. See if the Wildcats can play some tough defense here, keep the Redmen out of the end zone. And once again, the ball is right next to a pile of mud at the 20-yard line. So again, this play will come down to, does he see this as two down territory or is he gonna kick if he doesn't score? With the 14 nothing lead, I'd assume this would be two down territory. Braden Hill's out wide to the right. He's covered by Graham Smith. Connolly comes back to pass. Man is open in the end zone and it's touchdown. complete for a touchdown. Braden Hiltz broke free into the end zone. So Tewksbury jumps out to a three-score lead now with six minutes to go in the third quarter. They're up 20 to nothing as we await the extra point. 
The Wilmington defense completely fooled on that play. One man left back to defend that. It almost looked like Connolly could have run toward the end zone too. Yep. There seemed like a lot of open running room in that right side. So once again, Keo into kick. The adventure that is their extra point kicker. This wow. time it does not reach the end zone. The kick is blocked. There is a flag on the play. They're going to call a personal foul against That's Wilmington for roughing the kicker. Um, I thought when you block the kick, maybe I'm wrong. I thought when you partially block it, it's kind of open season. But uh, there'll be another opportunity for the Redmen to have an extra point attempt here. They will probably go for two. That's a tough call against the Wildcats there. I hope one of our crack cameramen, I want to give them credit for standing out in the cold today, Jim Buckley, Tom Prezire up here in the booth with myself and Jim, George Breslin down on the sideline, bringing you today's action. So Coach Turner's going to argue that ball was blocked, therefore that negates the roughing the kicker. And he's going to now, they, I'm guessing, since I can't read lips that well from back here, and his head's in my way, I'm guessing the officials tell me that nobody ever touched the ball. Again, I don't think this argument is going to be won by Coach Turner here. The man in the white hat usually has the last say. Oh, no, no maybe they're going to ask. They're going to ask the back judge whether that actually was blocked. See what he was watching, though. Here we go. We'll find out. Yeah, the conversation down the sideline. Now, all, Coach Turner, I think, is right. Three officials are getting together to discuss whether or not Wilmington did get a hand on that ball to block it, which would negate the roughing the kicker call. Quite frankly, I'm kind of surprised the official on the far end of the sideline didn't see that. So it uh, doesn't look like there's going to be a change. Uh, I guess we'll find out when we watch it on the replay. So delaying the action here again, six minutes left Coach in the third quarter. Like that explanation. <laughs> So by the time you're watching this game, once again, we hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving Day afternoon with uh, plenty of food. And now you're all working it off, getting ready for the Christmas holidays. Tuxbury now going for two-point conversion. Wynn and Dorigo lined up in an I formation behind Connolly. Tight set. Man in motion, handoff to Wynn. Finds plenty of open running room for a... Two-point conversion that is successful, and Tuxbury jumps out to a 22 to nothing lead here at Doucette Field, Thanksgiving morning, 2017. That drive took up almost half the quarter as well. Methodically just marching down the field. See if, if the offense can step up here and at least get some points on the board against this um, Tuxbury team. It wasn't until the second half of the Marblehead game that the Wildcats were able to mount an offense and uh, you know brought it back to within a seven-point loss. Yep. But uh, I think Marblehead uh, isn't quite yet in the same league as Tuxbury. I would second that, Chris. That is correct. But as long as there's time on the clock, there's still opportunity. So let's uh, at least see if we can score. So once again, Keo tees the ball up. We'll see if he kicks it or if Dorigo kicks it or maybe Blake Hiltz will kick it. He's in the same general area. I'm going with number four kicking it. <laughs> That's, no, maybe not. No, I'm wrong. Keo lets the ball go. That's ball fine. comes down kind of short, picked up on a bounce. Uh, knocked out of bounds, barely. Graham Smith was one of the deep men for the Wildcats and the ball was knocked out at about the 20 yard line. So once again, uh, Wildcat. They want a flag, Coach of wants a flag for intentionally knocking that out of bounds. Once again, the Wilmington uh, backs were pretty deep for the kickoff and again, the ball for I think the second or third time today bounced after the Tuxbury kickoff. 
Have we started the mud again, Chris? Well, once again, uh, field position is not good for the Wildcats. They have yet to get a first down today's game. Quite frankly, a little surprising. Four wide receivers out, hand off to Kenny, tries to find some running room up the middle. A little bit. He squirts free for about four or five yards up the middle. A little, little skirmish at the end of the play. Everybody's okay. And uh, Wilmington player getting uh, lectured by the official. So Mike Ducharme splits wide to the right. Tommy Robage splits wide to the left. Justin Frazier comes out in the slot. Roberts in the backfield with Kenny in a pile of mud, right exactly where they're standing. Fake the handoff right up the middle. Graham Smith keeps it. He stopped for no gain. Maybe a gain of a yard. Out to the 25-yard line. Still going to be third and about five for the Wildcats. Still looking for their first, first down of the game. And still trying to establish some semblance of a running game. And Tewksbury's front seven has done a good job of... Um, Mooting that point. And Graham is standing right in the mud here for the snap. Kenny keeps That'll the ball, and he's, he's across the uh, line of scrimmage, and he's good for a first down. Picked up a nine-yard gain. First time, for the, uh, first time of the day for Wilmington. They're starting to show a little bit of spark of life there. And again, with a quarter and a half to play, a lot of these seniors have a lot to play for, as this will probably be the last time the majority of them even play a football game. So they got uh, 15 Rob odd minutes to play. And make Smith work. rolls out to the right, passes downfield to Roberts, who has it complete, close to a first down. Picks up nine yards on the pass play. Now they're at a point of the field where the grass of the turf seems a little bit better than it is in other locations. Second and one for the Wildcats at the 46, 44 yard line. And that was a good idea to get Tyler Roberts involved a little bit in the offense as well. He hasn't had as many touches as he normally has. So spreading them out, open it up, see if we get some points. Once again, he split wide to the right. Three wide receivers left. Smith goes to the Not left, puts the ball downfield. Man is open, is intercepted. intercepted. Intercepted by Braden Hills in the backfield. He starts to return it to the 30, and he's taken down there. Justin Frazier takes takes Hiltz down in the 30-yard uh, 30, 30 line of uh, Tewksbury. Flag. There's a flag down in midfield. It's against Tewksbury. Most that likely. may have been on the return, however. It was late, too. So it looks like the ball is going to be placed down inside the 20 yard line, inside the 15 yard line. Man, Personal down foul. to the 10 yard line. Oh, how about we'll start that over? 13 yard line, Tuxbury takes over first down. Personal foul call on the interception return by. I think it was Hiltz. It might have been Lorick. Now I forget. It was Hiltz. Okay. Now on that play, Chris, uh, Graham had him, Smith had him open, and uh, the 50-50 ball was taken away by the Tewksbury defensive back. So, again, another open receiver that was just. First run, first uh, down run by Matovu. Brings the ball out to the 20-yard line. He picked up about eight yards on that play. Once again, the Wildcats have really had a hard time stopping the offensive push by the Tewksbury offensive line and the running backs, the fullbacks coming through the uh, through the line. And Tewksbury is in no hurry now with a 22-point lead. Two receivers split out wide for the Redmen on the left side. Connolly behind center. Hand off up the middle again, this time to Matovu who has enough close to the first down. 
Official marks it, that it will be enough for a first down out to the 23 yard line. Clock is running with 2.47 to go in the third quarter. You know, not quite the game we expected today. Um, I don't know if we attribute that to just uh, a lot of experience on the Tewksbury side of the field or just the way the ball bounces sometimes. Wilmington certainly had a couple opportunities early on on turnovers. Yep. It could be both. This is a tough team. Tewksbury made it to the Connelly uh, finals. Pitches out to win. A lot of big running room. Open hole on the uh, left side. Off left tackle. He's out just shy of another first down across the 30-yard line. And now they're just imposing their will. Again, uh, they're, they're a bigger school, bigger conference, have played a lot. Second and one for the Redmen. They just played a lot bigger than us. That's the simplest way to put it. Back to pass, Connolly. Hit him. Pressured, hit. Ball is downfield again, and it's almost complete. Once again, T Mason Lorick downfield at the 30-yard uh, line of the Wildcats. Ball went off his fingertips, made a great effort on it. He's already made two or three great catches today. And again, in that play, he got behind the uh, Wilmington quarterback. And will face a third and one here. Mike DeLucia comes out for the Wildcats. Tight formation for the, the Redmen. And a quarterback sneak. Enough for a first down out to the 35 yard line. Funny, I was thinking, Jim, uh, when Tuxbury made the initial call to defer to the second half, they got the touchdown, as you said, right before halftime, and then they took the opening second half kickoff right down the field for another touchdown, Belichickian style, I would say. That is correct. First and 10 for the Redmen at the 35. Connolly Bark signals, two men in the backfield. Handoff, reverse play to Kavanaugh up to the 50 yard line. He finds open running room inside the 40, taken down at the 37. It's going to be a hole here. On number five. Block in the back, perhaps. The uh, penalty on the mark on the play. Spot foul. So it's going to bring the ball back across midfield to the Tuxbury 48-yard line. But once again, Tuxbury is driving. <laughs> Even though we're uh, all from Wilmington. <laughs> On the Wilmington sideline, there is a certain degree of uh, appreciation for watching Coach Alward's offensive uh, prowess here. Always something new up his sleeve, and the kids executed very well. Shane Alward now comes out wide to the right. Connolly lines up underneath center. Once again, Laura comes in tight, tight end left. Wind goes in motion to the left. Pitch back to the left and it's finally stopped by the Wildcats for no gain. Good play over there by Dean Nally and Brendan Cook. And that's probably the end of the quarter here. Tewksbury even coming off and a tough loss this weekend, last weekend too, and one, one win from the Super Bowl has come out, come out here with a purpose to, uh, to their game as well today. So we're at the end of the third quarter. Tooks breeze up 22 to nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter action right after this. I'm Ferdinand. You look at me and think big. You think scary, but I'm a little misunderstood. Money! Sorry, I almost killed you. Involving misunderstood. You ought to fight it. Oh, I don't understand that at all. Kids with learning and attention issues like dyslexia and ADHD are misunderstood too. Take the time to understand. Best plan ever! With the right support, everyone can reach their full potential because you can't judge a bull by his cover. Learn more at understood.org. 
Okay, welcome back to the fourth quarter action. Today's 2017 Thanksgiving Day Football Classic. The Wildcats and Redmond took Spree on a drive. Second down and 10, just before midfield. Handoff to win up the middle. He finds some good running room for gain of about five or six yards across midfield to the 47 yard line. The Wildcats gonna bring up a third down and four. And Tuxbury has dominated the second half by time of possession, plays, score, everything. I think Wilmington ran about six plays max in that second, in the third quarter. And uh, Tuxbury has started to completely control the line of scrimmage here in the game. Chart here indicates Tuxbury's had 14 first downs from scrimmage. The Wildcats so far today just one. Just haven't been able to move the ball on the field against this Tuxbury defense. So once again, a tight formation, a full house backfield. And naturally they s all swap out. Two wide receivers out to the right. Connolly back, calling signals, back to pass. Pressure's on, he's got some room over there, being Force chased on by Cook, but he's got running room down the sideline. He's good for a first down where he's taken out of bounds at the 35, inside the 35 yard line of the Wildcats. So make that, chalk that up, number 15 first down for the Redmen today. Good athletic play by the quarterback there. Got to the edge, solely had nobody open and uh, picked up the first down. See if the defense here can put a couple. So Dorigo lined up again in the backfield, I formation with Wynn behind him, handoff to Wynn up the middle. He's knocked down for a short gain of about two yards, just outside the 30 yard line. Once again, Tuxbury controlling the line of scrimmage and completely dominating right now the second half. And of course the defense has been on the field a long time so they're starting to wear out as well. Uh, second in about seven for the Redmen. In the shotgun. Two wide receivers, including Alward out wide to the left. Back to pass, Connolly being pursued. Looks like they snuffed out a possible screen pass. This time he keeps it again, finds running room, yep. runs by several defenders. He's down inside the 20 yard line. Another nice scramble by Tuxbury Jr. quarterback Jay Connolly. And I think you're correct, uh, Chris, that was a screen pass set up and the uh, two defensive ends stayed back to make that a broken play and the, the, the legs of the quarterback just continue to hurt the Wilmington defense. So once again, first down for the Redmen at the 17 yard line of Wilmington. One receiver split out wide on each side. Inside handoff to Matovo. He stopped for a short gain. Picked up a couple of yards down to the 15 yard line. A little misdirection. I can't speak for the rest of my crew up here in the broadcast booth, but when the sun was shining in here this morning, it was nice. Now we're in the shade and it's kind of cold. <laughs> well, it's blocking the wind at least. It is chilly right. in here. Today. Connolly with two men in the backfield, handoff to the fumble. second man. It's a fumble in the play, but it looks like it's recovered. Looks like Tyler Roberts got in there and got it. There's going to be a fight here for it. I'll wait for the official call. Roberts was in there, but one of the Tuxbury offensive linemen was also in there. And if there was any battle for the ball and Tyler Roberts. Of course, was Tyler involved. Roberts came away with it. Yep. Tyler would come away with it. And we go back on offense. He's been a rock in the both the offense and the defense all year long. And we want to give a credit to all of these guys, all the co-captains, all the seniors playing their last game today. It's been a great season for the Wildcats coming into today, eight and two. Doesn't look like it's gonna end up on the positive side today, but there's still almost eight minutes left in the game. Smith in a shotgun formation, five, four wide receivers out. Five receivers go out, Smith is sacked. 
in the backfield, just outside the goal line, inside the five. Too much pressure by the Tewksbury defensive front. Well, they know that we have to pass the football, so they're just rearing back and firing out. So it's gonna be a difficult uh, time for Graham here. Joe Rosberg and Zach Fontaine in on the uh, tackle, along with a couple of other Redmen. The ball looks like it's at the four yard line. Once again, Kenny in the backfield with four wide receivers split out. Smith rolls to the right, has a little bit of room, he throws it out, it's intercepted. intercepted. And it's gonna be going back for a touchdown. Shane Elward intercept the ball at about the 15 yard line and runs it back for another Tewksbury touchdown. Graham tried to force that ball into between two uh, Tewksbury defenders. Maybe not the smartest read. Another flag's down. And we got another penalty marker that was thrown in late on the play. And I see a third. They keep on throwing them down. I don't know who uh, they're against at this point. There's one in the middle of the field and two over here at the uh, left side. So let's see what happens here. We'll see what the official calls are. Most of them seem to be pointing toward Tewksbury. I think there might have been a little too much celebration on the uh, the Tewksbury sideline, but uh, I'm not really sure. There's no indication as yet. Currently a 28 to nothing Redman. The officials having a coach with a, a, a conversation with Coach Brian Elward over in the Tewksbury sideline. And I guess if we're going to take a moment, we'll uh, we'll go to a quick uh, break in the action. We'll be back yeah, to finish on. the game right after this. Okay, we're back for the extra point out here at Doucette Stadium. Uh, the officials have sorted it out with the coaches, but uh, we're kind of clueless up here at this point. I believe the uh, sportsmanlike conduct will be marked off on the kickoff. Tewksbury's ready for the extra point. Keo lined up at the 10 yard line. Fake. It's, a, it's a fake, the man is open in the end zone. And he fell down. So the fake does not well, work. Once again, Coach Brian Alward had another one up his sleeve. And once again, the Doucette Field turf uh, cost him an extra point or two. Nice pass. The man in the end zone was open. Uh, I think he tripped over his own feet there. Derek I don't think Graf that was the turf. Derek Grafeo tripped in the end zone. Otherwise, he was wide open. So the extra point fails. So it's 29 to nothing. I'm sorry, 28 to nothing with about seven minutes to go here in the game. And I believe Tewksbury will be uh, set back 15 yards on the kickoff. Let's see. Which I also believe will put Wilmington in pretty good field position after the kick. And it'll give our offense and maybe the seniors one last chance to try to drive down the field, score a touchdown before the season's over. No, there's nothing. No, yeah. Okay, well. Probably, also, uh, probably unsportsmanlike on both sides. Here comes the So once kick. again, the ball is teed up at the 40 yard line. So no penalty, no penalty be, was, be assessed on the kickoff. Dorigo kicks it off, taken by Frazier at his own 25 yard line to the 30, out to oh. the 34 yard line, 35 where he's tripped up. Another flag. Flag on the play out at about the 40 yard line. It's gonna go against Wilmington. Maybe, I don't know. Yep. Uh, 
Ugh. being assessed against Wilmington. Uh, 10 yards, brings him back to the 25 yard line after the Frazier return. So things are uh, not going well for the Wildcats today. Came in with great hopes for a very competitive game and so far it's been completely one-sided. One more opportunity here, see what we can do. So Frazier and Robarge come out split wide to the right. Dusham wide to the left, handoff is to Kenny who is Ooh, he slipped through. Squirts free, but it's going to be a loss of a yard or two. He slipped on the mud, got under one of the tacklers. It's been a long night for, or a long morning for John Kenny today. Uh, not, 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 not a lot of open holes for him. But that shouldn't take away from a great year that he had. John Kenny had a, a phenomenal uh, 2017 season as a running back for the Wildcats. So Smith back to pass, and it's, Nuts. once again, it's thrown incomplete. It was intended for Ducharme or Robarge, one of the two. The ball fell between the two of them. And now that they're in a, almost a pass every play, uh, that's what Tuxbury's expecting. It's going to be third and 11 for the Wildcats. See if they try to get John Kenny a little bit in space here, too. Instead of throwing deep, maybe swing him. A little swing pass or a screen pass since they are um, coming hard, defensive line. Three wide receivers right for Wilmington. Again, Kenny alone in the backfield. Smith holds it, rushed, yep, complete the Roberts on the sideline. And he steps out at the 31, 32 yard line. Going to be shy of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and short, and um, the Wildcats are going to have to go for it. Clock continues to tick. Have no idea if it's accurate. So <laughs> Wildcats will uh, make an attempt here at fourth down. Roberts back to pass. Scrambles, throws it away. Fourth down, automatic turnover. Tuxbury will take over on downs at the 32 yard line. There was no one open there for Graham Smith, and he had absolutely no options available to him. And uh, instead of just throwing up for grabs, he, he just got rid of it. Again, and uh, some of the folks on the Wilmington sideline are starting to uh, call it a day. I can start to see a few people getting up. Not a huge crowd for Tewksbury today, that's for sure. Kind of um, surprising considering the season that they've had. They'll be going on for their 10th uh, win of the season to be 10 and two. Wildcats will be dropping to eight and three on the season. New quarterback it looks like for Tewksbury. Senior quarterback Tim Rivers steps in for the Redmen. Get some action here in his senior year. Handoff up the middle, stop for no gain. Shane DeRigo on the carry. Another opportunity for the defense to make some plays. And like uh, Chris said, we're missing to say this will be it for uh, a, a large group of seniors who led this team to a very, very successful season after a couple hard years on the football program. So. Certainly been a good year. Uh, Coach Craig Turner's uh, seniors certainly have nothing to be ashamed about. They far exceeded their expectations this year. I know he had the expectations, but uh, the kids have done a great job and brought Wilmington football back to a point where it's relevant again. Correct. Rivers again holds, hands the ball off to Wynn, who sprints out wide to the right. Good tackle. He's taken down on a great tackle by Justin Frazier for a loss. Good open field tackle. Loss of about six yards on the plague brings up third and 15. Again, playing hard to the end, an a, a, a attribute of a good football team. I know they're getting beat 28-0, but they have not, no quit 
Which is good to see. Down to the four minute mark in the fourth quarter. That comes from uh, coaching and senior leadership to not quit as you're losing by 28. Rivers behind center. Once again, Wynn and Dorigo in the backfield. Keeps the ball, back to pass. Daniels He's Gallows. hit. Ball Nobody floats free, it's caught by Wynn. He finds some open running room in the sideline. And he's down close to a first down. Good open field tackle by Jason Valley to uh, keep that from being a major league big play play. Rivers was hit just as he got rid of the ball. The ball floated up in the air right into Wynn's hands and he, he made a nice reception and about a 12 yard gain on it. So it's gonna be fourth and four for the Redmen at the Wildcat 26 yard line. So we can get the stop here. Hand off to Dorigo. He nope. finds open running room in the sideline. Down the sideline, it's open. Knocked out of bounds, but he's got another first down. Bailey Smith on that play. He's a sophomore, so Bailey's got two more years. Graham's brother. So it's good to see not only a good senior class, but there's some pretty quality underclassmen who will be coming back next year for the Wildcats as well. So uh, hopefully the start of uh, something successful here in Wilmington football. Well, for those that have been uh, waiting for that vacuum to uh, disappear for many years, it's uh, certainly looked forward to. Three minutes to go in the game. The clock has stopped presently. Kyle Zervis comes in a running back for the Redmen. Rivers calls signals, hands off to Zervis. Goes around the right end, cuts back. Stopped by a host of Wildcat tacklers on the far sideline. Picked up about two or three yards, just outside the 10 yard line. Make an attempt to keep the Redmen out of the end zone one more time. We're gonna to try to have a quick word with Coach Craig Turner after the game today. We'll meet him down on the field for a quick assessment on how he thought the season went. It'll be a tough couple minutes for him after this game, but again, he should be proud of what they accomplished. Nathan L, senior receiver comes in for the last couple of plays of the game, split on the right. Hand off again around the left end to Shane Elwood, who stopped for a short gain. Another tackle for linebacker Bailey Smith and Tyler Roberts. We have a timeout called by, Wilmington. I believe, Tewksbury by Wilmington. We got two left, he said, so. Third it looks like he's, sorry, he looks like he's just trying to get us, stop the clock, take the ball back to get one more shot at scoring points, so. Third and about five. Sorry. <laughs> they want to get the ball back. Matovo in the backfield with Shane Alwood. Matovo number one, Alwood number three. Rivers calls signals. Hands off to Matovo, who's taken down immediately as he gets the ball. Kyle, Kyle Kenyon. Kyle Kenyon, great. You know, another kid who's had a solid season, not one of the co-captains, but he's been solid all year long on offense and defensive line. And he'll be back next year. So again, filter throughout the senior class, through all the, a good senior class, there are a lot of underclassmen who will be able to come back and maintain this good run for Coach Turner and Wilmington. Clock continues to run, 118 left in the game. Ball is down at the 10 yard line. Fourth down for the Redmen. Hand off, open field running by Kyle Zervis off right, right tackle. He's down close, probably has a first down. No, first down, Wilmington. Well, 
So it looks like the Wildcats were able to stop him on fourth down there. So he was stopped just shy of the uh, first down marker. So one so, last chance. Yeah. Clock shows a minute left. Tuxbury will be in a prevent defense of uh, sorts. Uh, not sure why they were back at the 20 yard line, but now they're moving up toward the line of scrimmage. That would be a true prevent defense. Smith back to pass, looks downfield, throws it long and deep. It's intended for Justin Frazier. Incomplete, good coverage by Brian, by uh, yeah, Shane Elward, the next Elward. And they're dropping, they, that, on that play they dropped seven and there's a flag. Illegal man downfield by Wilmington. Uh, so there'll be a loss of down, I believe. Half or will a they distance. just decline it? Penalty is declined. Wildcats is still have the ball second down now at the five yard line. Make sure we uh, send a shout out to the Redmond football team too. Again, they've had a great season, 10 and two. Would have been in the Super Bowl if not for a uh, eight point loss to North Attleboro last week. And just keep in mind, they're also coming off only four days of rest. So a real credit to the conditioning of Coach Elwood's team. They played this well today against the Wildcats. Robarge and Frazier coming out wide to the right. Smith back to pass, he passes it back to Tyler Roberts, Roberts, who's got it complete. And he's out to the 11 yard line. Not sure if that was, that was a design screen or if he was just uh, still in the backfield, but uh, clock continues to tick. This will be probably one or two plays left, 30 seconds left in the season. Spread him out. Smith back to pass, looks downfield, slips, yeah, still has it, rushed, throws the ball, and it's incomplete, incomplete. along the sideline. Tyler Roberts came close to grabbing it on the ground. Flags on the play, too. So. As we come to the end, a lot of flags late here in the fourth quarter. Oh, we got. Time enough maybe for one more play. I can't make out what the official is saying. So I think uh, it's a one, what did he say, one play? Okay, at some point there was a penalty against Tuxbury on the play, so it, it does give Wilmington a first down. It's a five yard penalty is marked off. We're probably down to the last play, about 10 seconds left in the game. Once again, congratulations to the players on both teams, all the fans that braved the cold today at Thanksgiving Day. Pass downfield for Roberts, complete hook and ladder play down the sideline Kenyon. to Kenyon. He's down to the 50, and he's knocked out nice of bounds tackle. just over the 50-yard line. The most exciting play of the day, Jim, probably for turns out correct. to be the last. And that was it. So that's it, folks. Thanks for joining us. Once again, I want to thank our uh, people on the uh, telecast today, Chris Neville, along with Jim Boyle, camera people, Tom Pizarra, Jim Buckley, George Breslin on the field. Shout out again to Steve from the Wilmington Advocate for providing some statistics. Thanks for your help today, Steve. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's game on WCTV. Enjoy your Thanksgiving day. See you back next year for Wildcat Football on WCTV. Thanks for coming.